Hey Hope Factory, hey Salem, we are so glad to have you back with us again. This is our second part of Difficult Conversations. We got the most amazing, wise, uh, incredible Pastor Sean with us. Uh, pastor Sean uh, is the Pastor Ministries here at Salem Baptist Church of Chicago. So he is our pastor. <laughs> he is our leader. He is my leader. And so I'm so glad he had a few minutes to just call in on here and talk with me. Hey, we're talking about sexual identity for this difficult conversation. It's supposed to be difficult. We're talking about sex, S-E-X. <laughs> we're talking about male and females. What do you have to say from your wisdom, from what you have learned in, in school and in seminary as God has led you and spoken to you about uh, sexual identity that you would tell some of our teenagers? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you all so much for having me. I don't know who you were talking about, uh, when you were about this wise person. I think somebody made maybe sent you a bribe payment or something. Uh, but I'm just happy to share uh, something I've learned. Um, yeah, so it's, it's real interesting, Pastor John, when you talk about stuff I've learned in seminary, stuff I've learned in church. Um, I don't know about you, but I feel like the church has actually been notoriously guilty of not talking a whole lot yes. about <laughs> sex um, other than to tell people don't do it, right? And I, th I think that has messed a lot of people up mm -hmm. um, because I think a lot of people would say, you know, well, okay, got it. Don't do it because it's wrong, right? but I still have these feelings. I still have mm. these desires. I still have these urges. Um, I still have these things that I want to do. I still have these things in my body that I want to do. I still have these um, questions. Um, maybe I've had these experiences that I don't understand. And um, I think we leave people with a lot of questions. So I really appreciate these conversations because it gives people an opportunity to try to figure out, okay, what's true, what's not. I think um, one of the most helpful things that I have learned is to never be afraid of asking or trying to seek out information or trying to understand more about sex and sexuality. One of the most important things that you can understand is that God made sex. Yes. That God made it, and listen, let me tell you something. It's good. <laughs> I can testify. Correct. As a married man, it is a good thing. <laughs> God made it. And so, you know, we don't have to be ashamed of it. We don't have to run from it. I think a lot of times we don't talk about it in the church because um, there's a lot of aspects to it that uh, maybe we don't really understand. There's a lot of questions that people ask that we don't know how to answer. Um, there are a lot of things that we've been told is inappropriate to say. Um, and so we shy away from it. Um, but this is something that God has made. This is something that God has given to us. And so you never have to be ashamed. You never have to be afraid. You never have to hide this. Um, and so I just appreciate you for opening this up um, because I think that's one of the most important things. It's been really helpful for me and my wife to know that we're free to talk about this and free to explore uh, you know, free to hold this open. Yeah. And you are someone who, uh, when your teaching style, your leadership style is, hey, come as you are. And I love even when listening to your messages of how you're not afraid to attack, cer attack certain subjects and speak on certain things. And uh, you're someone who is approachable in that type of way. What about if there's a teenager who, um, or a young person, young adult, who feels ashamed about maybe some of their past. Uh, maybe they were uh, molested. Maybe they were abused. Maybe they themselves made the wrong decision and they just have a lot of guilt, uh, a lot of shame. Uh, they feel bogged down by the heaviness of their past experiences. What could you speak or what does the Bible or the gospel has, have to offer or what tips do you have to offer to that person yeah. who's struggling? Yeah, thank you for that. I think. One thing that we don't talk enough about, um, which is one of the most powerful messages of the gospel, 
um, Romans 8 and 1, there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That shame, we don't have to carry it. Um, the gospel itself says that God loves us. He loves us so much that the shame that we carry, whether it is something that is done to us or whether it is something that we've done, it doesn't matter to God. God says, I love you more than what you did. I love you more than what was done to you. You matter. You are valuable to me. Um, you are precious. You are special. And so we don't have to hide from God. If you look at um, when, when Adam and Eve sinned um, in Genesis 3, um, the Bible says before that, when God first created them, he created the male and female. And watch this. They were naked. The Bible says they were naked and they were not ashamed. Okay. In Genesis 3, when they sinned, one of the first things they did was they covered themselves, hid from God. They hid from God. They hid from God. That's what they did. They hid themselves from God. And shame makes us feel like we have to hide. Right. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of us have had sexual experiences. Mm -hmm. um, some of us, um, we've had things happen to us like molestation. Some of us have had things happen to us like rape. Um, some of us are into some sexual activities, um, some things on our phones and on our devices, if we can go there, right? Yes. Some things that we want, don't want nobody to know. Right. Um, we got some secret accounts. Um, we yes. got some secret apps with some passwords. We got some mm -hmm. things that we get into. We don't want anybody to know about it. And we hide that um, because we feel shame about it. What God says is, I love you so much. You don't have to hide. You can open that thing up to me and come to me and receive my love for you. And when you receive my love for you, my love for you can bring you out of whatever you have been hiding in. So you don't have to hide. You don't have to keep those desires in the dark. You don't have to um, run into a corner. You don't have to try to cover yourself up or hide from God. And it's so deep about hiding from God. It ain't like God can't find you. <laughs> you know, it ain't like, you know, I'm, I'm, it ain't like God don't know what you're doing. Like mm -hmm. it, you put a password on it as much as you want to, you know, uh, uh, hide it somewhere. You know, you think you, you, cause you, you somewhere in the basement somewhere that God don't see. I mean, so God's like, I know what you're doing and guess what? I still love you. You good. I love you. So don't put that in the come to me because I have so much. God has so much to say to us about those things and so much. He wants us to be able to understand so that we can experience the goodness of this thing that he created for us. Yes, yes absolutely. And in the last few minutes of this conversation, hey, uh, you have a beautiful family. Uh, people can see you standing up on a stage with your beautiful kids and see that blessing that God has given unto you. And um, maybe for uh, some young people who maybe aren't married yet or going down that path, uh, what tips would you give to make it into that blessing? Or if God's called them to be single, what would you speak to them to? What, what, what can you give closer remarks uh, from your position of being on both sides of the table and identifying, I think, as a strong black man, male leader, <laughs> speak your truth. Yes, you can, my brother. <laughs> um, you know, I, I would say, um, first of all, hands down, I'm married up. You know, <laughs> my wife is bad and God has blessed me and I'm so very grateful. Um, you know, uh, I would say um, love you. Don't look for a person to complete you. You know, we look at these movies, you complete me. No, <laughs> you know, you love you because um, um, you're not looking for somebody to come in and complete you. You're not looking for a 50-50 love. You're looking for a 100, 100 love. You're looking for somebody who's coming to you complete and you are complete mm -hmm. where you have a sense of who you are. I think, um, cause I was that person who was so concerned about 
okay, who am I going to get with and what's she going to be like? And I ended up marrying somebody who was absolutely not the type that I thought I wanted, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So I thought I was going to get with a particular type of woman. I thought she was going to be yay height, you know, Mm -hmm. yay big, you know, yay this. And um, God ended up bringing me somebody who was beyond what I expected. Mm. And it was because I started focusing on me being a complete person. That's good. Me being whole, uh, me figuring out who God was making me to be and my identity and being clearer on what it was that I wanted and, and what God was putting in me to give to the world. And I promise you, um, if you begin to focus on those things, um, it's no lie. You, you Not only do you become clearer on the kind of person that is supposed to be in your life and who you want to go after, God has a way of helping you understand of where that person is and you end up seeing that person right in your world. And then just like Adam saw Eve and was like, whoa, man, you know, that's <laughs> that's kind of how it happens. You you begin to discover how God has blessed you and you go after that. Um, and so I just I wouldn't put any anxiety into it. Um, God loves you. He knows what you need. And if you focus on being a complete person, um, then he will he will meet your needs and, and you will know what you need and you will be in a position to go after it and then you won't have to worry about you know um coming to see me uh because you need divorce counseling you know later on in your life (laughs) that is powerful yes yes and we want to stay in that beautiful blessing of what god gives us uh those are amazing uh wisdom nuggets you dropped you even got some some snaps and some claps from the people in the back when you did your romans reference uh, so <laughs> they're being quiet now, but, but they, but they really enjoyed that. Hey, I appreciate you talking with me. I appreciate, um, you having this time to speak with us. Let's do it again. Is that okay? If we Absolutely. Can do it again, have another conversation. And I think this really helps us, uh, moving forward with understanding our sexual identity in Christ. I'll talk with Absolutely. you soon. Absolutely. Thank you, Pastor John. Love what you're doing. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. All right.